Hello everyone, this is Amiti Sensei. Today I will show you how to use this note taking app by Microsoft called OneNote. I've done tutorials on some note taking apps in the past many times, but this is the first time to introduce you to the use of OneNote. I've actually received many comments saying they want me to do a tutorial on this, so I'll try my best to do that today. About this app, it's highly recommended especially for those who are Microsoft users. If you happen to be using tools such as Excel, Word, Outlook, and PowerPoint on a daily basis, they work really well with this app OneNote, so please watch this video until the end. You can use this app even if you're not a Microsoft user. What makes this app different from any other apps is that there's no edge and it's an infinite canvas where you can keep adding text. For those who want to write a bunch of stuff or paste a bunch of images here, this app will be really helpful, so even though this video will be a bit long, I really want you guys to watch this video until the end. I promise there will be lots of eye-opening features you didn't know about before, so please stay with me for a bit. Alright, let's open OneNote. Once you open the app, this is the first screen you'll see. It should look like this with these paragraphs. So you'll be managing folders by making use of these paragraphs. Here we have a toolbar at the top. Just like with any other apps, here you can find tools such as brushes, erasers, and lots of tools. Also, when you want to paste an image, this is where you can do that. For managing folders in OneNote, there are three stages. And the first stage on the very left is general. So here it says study what Amity Sensei right now. But there are other ones such as work and expenses. So create your main categories on the very left side. The middle one of this category is notes. So in the study category or genre, I have five notes in total including science, math, world history, Japanese history, and Japanese. If I want to take a look at some notes on science for instance, there should be a page added here. So this will be the canvas but you'll be writing things down on this single page by the end. If you don't create these folders in the first place, things can get confusing later in OneNote, so please don't forget to do that. So here I have some notes for math right now in the category called study. And within the notes, I have pages that cover topics of pi, probability, volume, etc. From now on, I'll show you how to make notes. You can create one from a category on the left. There should be a plus button at the bottom left, so tap it, and now you can create a new one, so name your project here. You could also change the color. Once you manage to create category notebooks on the left side here, we will start working on the middle part. Apparently, they call this area in the middle of section. So now we can keep adding categories. Since I added a cooking category for instance, so in the next paragraph, I could add subcategories such as side dishes, bento box, and sweets recipes. So keep creating these subcategories under the main category, cooking in this case. Once you manage to create all of the sections, next we'll work on the page. If I tap on this bento box tab for instance, now it shows a page without a title. But you can add a new note from the plus button, so you could have them by day, like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Once you have them by day, there are options to insert images, text, etc. in the tool panel at the top. But I'll talk about it later. For now, keep in mind to think about creating your folders. In case you want to work on notes or sections, you could just long tap to change the order like this. There is a pencil mark at the bottom, so you can change the name as well. Okay, now I'm going to create a page. This time I'll basically be talking about all the tools we have here, so I won't really be showing you how to create my notes here. But anyway, I'll be creating some notes on science, along with a lot of anatomical images. From the plus button at the bottom left, create a new page and name the title. 
As you name the title here, it automatically changes the title on the sidebar on the left as well. Here we have a toolbar which is set in two stages, so at the top we have tabs including Home, Insert, Draw, and View. I'll first explain about Home. Once you tap Home, you have a text panel here at the bottom to edit text. As you touch anywhere on the screen, you can type in text like this. So go ahead and type in whatever text you want to have. This way, text should be inserted in a textbook like this. For this textbook, you could always change the width as well as the position later. For the text inside the box too, you could have them bold or italic too. And you can also change the color or add highlights to have some color in the back as well. In case you want to have some bullet points, you can find a tab for that at the top. So tap it so that a new textbook should appear again like this. And this is where you can add text. On a side note, I have my keyboard on the screen right now. But when you use OneNote, I swear it's definitely better to use your keyboard. This is because OneNote is originally meant for you to take notes on PC while using your keyboard. And they just transfer everything over here on the iPad. So this app is supposed to work really well with the keyboard. So if you can, please use your keyboard when you use your iPad as well. For these text next to the bullet points, in case you want to have an indent, tap here. And there's this tab to do that at the top. So now you should have some indents. For these text, you can basically put them anywhere on the screen. Think of this as a sort of puzzle. You can see your text images and I'll touch some PDF files later too. And so in OneNote, you can set them wherever you prefer to, just like a puzzle. Other than these bullet points, you can also create these checkboxes or these bullet points of star symbols, which can be used as a reminder for you to remember some important stuff. To attach images, switch to a tab Insert, where it will display your images. So here, go ahead and select an image of your choice. Now the image should be inserted to your notes like this, and as you touch it, you could zoom in or out and change the position too by tapping the arrow mark in the center like this. In the same way, you can keep adding images. Just like this, select multiple images and insert them here on the screen, or you could paste them horizontally as well. You may have noticed by now, but the width of these notes can be extended infinitely. It goes the same vertically as well. Usually there is a break at the bottom of any notes of A4 size in a note-taking app, but in one note, there is no break and you can keep extending your notes forever. This is what makes one unique, and I recommend this app for those who just want to keep writing things down without caring about a break. You can paste things other than images too, and here I'll introduce you to this thing called graph. As you tap on graph in the insert tab, these grids should appear. And here at the top, you can find the option to add more grids. So you could extend them towards up or down. So for those who want to write something with grids aligned, please use this one. The other note-taking apps don't really have this function that creates grids automatically, so I find this really good. Next is about voice recording function. For those who take the minutes, you can save your recording and paste it here using this function, so I want to briefly talk about it here. If you go to the audio and insert tab, you'll start recording like this. Now the recorded audio is implemented in this note. You can see here that says audio, and as you tap this, you can always play it anytime you want. Next is about files. For those who use Microsoft or works well with OneNote or Excel and Word. 
So if you have some data attached here from Microsoft as you tap this, it will take you there automatically. Since I'm not a Microsoft user, I have some data from numbers attached here instead this time. Once attached, you get to see the data from numbers on preview. You could also go to numbers from here too. All in all, we have this function where you can save some data created in other apps here in advance and see it. I personally love this function. You get to save a bunch of stuff here, place them in any way you want, and see them at a glance, so this is really great. Other than this, you can also paste PDF in the same way. This time I found some materials about skull in PDF, so I'll try to paste them here. Now the PDF file is saved at the bottom left. From here where it says PDF preview, you can find a list of pages all saved in PDF. If you want to keep them, you can just leave them as they are, but in case you want to hide the preview, there should be an option that says delete a print image, so tap this, and now only the icon should be displayed like this. If you tap this later, then you can always see preview, so you can set these things according to your preferences. Here we have tabs such as link, math equations, date, etc. Please take a look and see what they have here. Here we have this thing called meetings, and this is something I want to talk about here. I assume there are some of you guys who use Microsoft and manage your schedule with Outlook. And what you can do here is that your schedule from Outlook can be imported to OneNote. Sorry I don't have mine here as I haven't worked on it. But as you tap on the tab called Meeting Details, many options will appear on the right. As you tap them, they will show up your notes, and this is where you can put information about participants, location, meeting time, etc. So for those who use Outlook, please check this one out. We also have stickers. I'm not too sure what they really are for, but you can find some funny stamps like these. I guess these stamps can be used when you want to draw attention to some parts of your notes. On the very right, we have this thing called research panel. I find it helpful, especially for studying. What it does is that as you type in any words here in this research tab, you'll search on the web and pull out some pages, PDF images, etc. that you can refer to. You can then import them here on your notes as well. Next is about handwritten notes or drawing tools. Right now the tab draw is selected, and here you can use pencils, erasers, highlighters, etc. It feels really smooth writing with these tools. I usually use GoodNotes 5, but the ease of writing with these pens is almost as good as the ones in GoodNotes 5. Next is about highlighters. If I want to add some highlights to this image of skull, Grab some highlighters, color, and trace over the image here. This way you color while keeping the image at the back. It's the same with other apps, but even if you highlight text or an image like this one, you leave the black color as you draw. This comes in really handy when you want to specify each part of a skull by color for instance. Next is about shape tools. 
Shape tools help you draw nice shapes with rectangle, circle, etc. I personally like the arrow tool. As you grab the arrow tool, long tap and pull it like this, you can draw a nice straight line. You can draw a straight line like this in other note apps too, but not many of them come with this arrow mark. I don't think GoodNotes, Notability, or NoteShelf had this arrow mark yet either. So even though this isn't really a big deal, I personally find it's quite nice. You can also find other things such as this x-axis and y-axis. You could just drag it like this on the screen to draw a nice coordinate, so this can be helpful especially for those who study math, I think. At last, let's go to the tab view at the upper right. Here you can say how you want your notes to be displayed. So if you tap on this option that says page width, you get to see the overview of your notes. Or you can also change the page color, the background is blue in color as you can see. And you can also set the style of your page from here in case you want to add some lines and gray lines. It seems like you can also set your password here, so set this when you want to save some important notes. At very last, let's export. As you tap on the export tab, it will give you an option that says invite notebook users. And as you tap it, other people can access to your notes as long as they are Microsoft users. They can also edit, so you can edit your notes with others at the same time as well. So for those who are Microsoft users, it may be a good idea to create a group. If you select this option that says send to other apps, you can see your notes and other note apps too. It can be GoodNotes 5, or this time I'll send it over Notability. By saving it as a new document and bringing it over here in Notability, I get to view my notes like this. Unfortunately though, it wasn't PDF by JPEG data. This means you can't select text or open your attached audio in PDF either, so if anyone knows how to save this in PDF format in other apps, please let me know in the comments down below. Alright, that was all about OneNote today. It was kind of a long video, but thank you so much for watching my video until the end. To summarize some important points made in this video, make sure to understand how these paragraphs work to manage your files, and when creating a page, make use of these four tabs at the top that add text, images, PDF, audio, etc. to your canvas in order to create your unique canvas. Regarding how to use this OneNote or how to make use of an infinite canvas, I'm thinking of making a tutorial video on it, so please look forward to my upcoming video. On a side note, there is another infinite canvas app called Concept, and I've done a tutorial on it a while ago, so please check it out if you haven't watched it yet. What's different from OneNote is that while Concept gets more of illustration or design-like looks, this OneNote is more like a notebook. OneNote can come in really handy when inserting text, images, graph, etc. So I would say use this one if you want to use it for studying or taking a minute. And use Concept if you want to draw illustrations on an infinite canvas. So please take this one for your reference. Okay, I'm getting a bit tired after talking for a while, but I hope you find this video somewhat helpful. And please give a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!